Today Show with Steve Merchant. Hello there. And Claire Sturgis. Oh, hello, boys. Carl's ill. Well, he's not here. I, I mean, I never believe people when they're ill. I think yeah. they're always malingering. I never t take any days off work. I just think you can drag yourself in unless it's unless it's life threatening well, or. To, to be fair, Rick, can I just stop you there? Um, it's yeah. not so much that you take days off as you'll just suddenly decide around lunchtime that you've overeaten and yeah. you need to go and lie down. But I'm my own with boss. With a cold compress. <laughs> yeah, and but a I'm Swedish my own. masseuse. <laughs> I'm my own boss. Yeah. <laughs> So it's in not so much you take days room. off. It's not so much you take days off as you never actually do a full day's work. <laughs> yeah, you actually exactly. prevent that. I, nev well. I never take that hour and a half off a day. <laughs> exactly. Um, XFM 104.9. So what's nine. the story, Claire? Do you know anything about Carl? Do you know what his, his no, illness is? No, I, I think he's got this, uh, this sort of cold virus that's uh -huh. going around. He phoned me yesterday. He did sound poorly in mm -hmm. his defence. Poorly. A bit croaky. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. He I'm coughed not, a bit. I'm not being funny. He better be in hospital. To, to miss take, this show. To definitely. miss this show, the flagship show of the week on XFM. Do you know, you are right, cos, uh, and you've been away, haven't you? You've know, been away two you. weeks. We had the best off yeah. again. My best part of the best of. Yeah. Best part of the best of the last two weeks, yeah. shall we? Yeah. I mean, I, I, we're gonna try and get him on the phone. We're gonna phone him and, uh, and, and I want him to really explain himself because, you know, I think he's malingering, to be honest. Well, so. he phoned me in the week and he said, uh, Steve, don't forget, there's a documentary on on Friday night about Oliver the Humanzi, the yeah. human monkey. He yeah. said, he said to me, it's gonna be brilliant. And it wasn't. And it wasn't brilliant. It was- I I've, I've specially stayed in and watched it. I, I taped it and watched it afterwards and I've never seen so much hype and desperation. They kept showing the same clip of this, definitely, this chimpanzee yeah. that- that walked upright like a lot of chimps can. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, it uh, lost its hair, so it was half human because all humans are bald. Yeah. yeah. So that's the half human bit. It didn't have hair. I'm sorry, humans do have hair on their heads. Yes. The other thing was this this desperation to go. Could it be half chimp? No. It's a chimp that superficially looks less like a chimp than other chimps. Um, yeah. So, uh, Lee Evans looks a bit like a chimp. Is he half chimp, half human? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's a human who looks a bit like a chimp. That's yeah. libelous. Yeah. That's a bit insulting, isn't it? Should we just play some music Yeah, now? I'm really okay. sorry about that. I'll oh. get back to you on that. Yes. Tick tock, that's Coldplay and Clocks <laughs> on XFM 104.9. Which Actually, is can, I tell you, can I tell you a Coldplay coming yeah. in a couple of weeks time to a co-host Zoe Ball show? Right, one, don't ever interrupt me. Sorry. Two, don't tell them about other people's shows. No. Okay, moving on, thank Please you. Please do not mention that there are any other television celebrities on yeah. this channel, on this yeah, station. Sorry. We don't want to convince people it's only Ricky. But the interruption was the main thing. Sorry, um, sorry. Well, we can't get older Carl, right? We looked, he's got his ho uh, old number out there. Uh, 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 what, his home number? Yeah, it's a hold on, alright. So, uh, we went to the new records. He hasn't even given him this, this new home number. So, something's funny going on. He doesn't want to be contacted. He hasn't given me his home number. I've tracked down a friend who's looking it for us. That phone might ring any moment. I apologise for that. But why is Carl not available? It's interesting that neither you or I, and I like to think of ourselves as being fairly close friends of Carl. Yeah. We have made him the man he is today. We yeah. cannot get in touch with him. In, we the, same in the same way that that bloke bought Oliver. Sure. I think that Carl is now ours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Well, he, yeah, exactly. I think very much that's true, yeah. Yeah. Carl is very much like a if human we, Z. If we look, we're, we're, we're gonna lose contact with him and find him five years in a circus in Manchester. Yeah, exactly. They're doing experiments on him. Yeah, yeah. And they're going, we, we can't we, figure him out. Yeah. Well, he's, there's something wrong he with his He looks like a human, he but- he, d he acts like a- cos usually humans stand upright. Yeah. And Carl likes to walk on all fours whenever he can. Yeah. It's he's not interested in other human women, he's only interested in apes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't make sense. <gasps> oh my god. And he's bald. He is yeah. bald. Oh look, this- there's as much evidence and for Carl being a human Z as Oliver. Yeah. I think there's more. I think there's more. And, oh. Well, Carl barely walks up, right? I know. Scared of fire. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's just, it is interesting, isn't it? Oliver was built, wasn't he? Yeah. I'd see, I, 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 I don't know. Was, yeah, why were you was... looking, Rick? I'm interested to. I'm interested <laughs> that you, you, I couldn't, what, what, your eyes were kind of uncontrollably uh, drawn Steve, towards his? there. No, no, I didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at his face. No, I, uh, I oh. Sorry, Rick, but if there's no. something you want to <sighs> get off your chest. Yeah, and that's- that was the human part of it then, was it? Being built like that? Cos yeah. it's humans, but- Yeah. Although Carl's is very tiny and hidden behind it. <laughs> and he's got- I've noticed something else as well. He's got a big red arse. That's true. Hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. It's all beginning to slot into place. That's- And I've seen him c climb up a, a cabinet and eat a banana as yeah. well. Just to- Yeah. Have a lunch And peel it with his toes. <laughs> 
it's all coming together. Yeah. Right, we're gonna <laughs> track him down, cos I, I, he's malingering, he's definitely malingering. Yeah. I'll tell you what, he's, he's at home now, in the garden, swinging on his tyre. <laughs> he's not ill. <laughs> <laughs> I think more truthfully, someone said to me, uh, that I said, uh, Carl might be ill, they said, right, are you not gonna do the radio show then? Well, that's what annoys me. I mean, that's the biggest but, problem, is that, yeah. let's be honest, we haven't got anything without All Carl. we've got is the hook. People are staying listening, cos eventually they think we might get through to him at home, yeah. and there'd be fun on this show to be had. If we don't get in touch with Carl, I think we may as well just shoot off and leave Claire to do the show. I've on got her some own. great music. Is that not a? Well, it's, is a, that, it's a small. small well, you could leave uh, the music with me. I could just play. There's not many reasons. That is true, isn't it? To be here. <laughs> okay, well, play some great music yeah, now, play Steve. Play great tune. Okay, sure. wedding present, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I'll explain what it is afterwards. Just play. It. So yeah. it's, it's a joy. There's a monkey. There's a monkey theme. There is a monkey, there is a monkey theme. connection. Mm. Call in if you know the answer. <laughs> Doing their cover version of Pleasant Valley Sunday. That's from sure. this new uh, compilation of those. Uh, remember, they brought out a load of seven inches. Of course, in I, did. Of course I did. Of course one I did. <laughs> one a, one a my month. It was my favourite day. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and, uh, oh. and on the B, B, do you remember on the B side of each one there was a cover of a different song? Steve, I even played the B side of each one <laughs> and listened to the song. <laughs> the <laughs> connection there that we're talking about was, of course, it was by the Monkeys. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, Indeed. yeah. Brilliant. They, Brilliant. they turned up in yesterday's episode, didn't they? Oh. A, a lot of people, I'm sure, won't have seen this documentary. It was on Channel Five after all. Oh, so yeah. I always feel like we should uh, remind people that uh, what, what we're actually talking about. If we just happen to mention Oliver, a lot of people don't know what that means. Yeah. Um, if we explain that it is the uh, primate version of Carl. Yeah, that's exactly. That's a sort of shorthand, isn't it? Yeah, the half. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, they were on a Jap- the, 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 the human Z. The human Z. He was on a, cha a Japanese, uh, TV show with- uh, they were doing experiments on him to find out if he was half human, and the monkeys happened to be there. Yeah. Mickey Dolan saying, you know, I'm quite interested to find out because, you know, I'm a monkey. <laughs> one of the Brilliant. monkeys. Brilliant. <laughs> Excellent. <extraordinary. laughs> <laughs> it was wow. absolutely bizarre. Of course, we, um, we've been off jetting around the world, Claire, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to boast. I'm sure you don't no, want to boast I, either. Carl but, told um, me you'd been off, you know, off to the States. Yeah, that was the reason we weren't here the last couple of weeks that we went to, uh, Los business Angeles. Business or pleasure? Yeah, it was a little bit of business, a little bit of pleasure. Mm. You know, I like to combine the two. Um, <laughs> and, uh, nice. It was, uh, we were, um, uh, meeting, uh, a, a company about doing the office for America. Um, yeah. Actually redoing it. Yeah, yeah not, not, redoing not with it with... or any of the cast, but no. with American actors. American actors do it, yeah. But the so. thing was, they, they, they were flying us over, and it was like the whole business class trip, you know, spending a little bit of money, and, uh... Virgin Upper Class, actually. Virgin Upper Class. I'd excellent. like to nice. recommend excellent. it. Excellent. It's, excellent it's brilliant. Very good service. Definitely Easy. get free flights now. Easy. Yeah, definitely. Easy. Brilliant, yeah. Uh, Richard Branson, lovely bloke, and I love it's Tubular brilliant. Bells. I don't, so well I don't think he owns it anymore. Does he not? But he's still a lovely bloke. He's still a good What does he own? He must own some that we can get. Oh, does he involve with Virgin Records anymore? <sighs> Wouldn't have thought so. No, I don't know. no, V2. Well, what does he do? V2 and Virgin V. What's that? Right. Virgin V's some Is that phones? beauty products or Brilliant. something. Brilliant. What about what? Virgin <laughs> underwear? Brilliant. Whatever. Yeah, yeah give, us whatever, that. give us some of that. Give us some of that, Branson. Give us some of that. But I was uh, going to New York before going on to Los Angeles, where all the meetings were just for a little, uh, just meet some friends over in New York. And, uh, it's amazing, because, uh, Virgin Business Class, they pick you up in a sort of chauffeur-driven car, they drive you down, there's no bot, you don't have to check in upper with class. all the wish- Upper class, upper class, it's like, for, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, you don't need to w sort of queue up with the great unwashed, no. with screaming kids, with ordinary people. Yeah. You yeah, know, basically, yeah, you, yeah. you get, you, they just send your information ahead to the airport, and you just drive through, a kind of drive through McDonald's-style check-in, they take your bag, they check your passport, Passport, boom, they drop you at the executive lounge where there are, I swear to God, lovely free plums. I had two lovely juicy free plums in the executive lounge. I haven't eaten plums for years. Forget, he forgets the bloke's name, but they had, <laughs> he had lovely <laughs> juicy dog. free plums, all right? That, that's the sort that of- That is why- That's the sort of wit that I'm capable of. That I heard the word he is plum. flying first car he to meant, America. He meant to a second comedy. fruit. I changed it, I transposed the whole thing so suddenly he was sucking on a man's <laughs> testicles who he'd never met before. Exactly. For money. Exactly. That's the sort of things I'm capable of. Which is of. only half true. <laughs> <laughs> so he's used his there comedy was mind. No money involved. Right. That is why he was being jetted off to America to yeah. talk comedy. That is the kind of quality. But it was get. it was great. It was a really lovely flight. It was a lovely car, luxury car, and the the flight. It was like the advert. I've uh, got those beds that sort of just well, the, rec yeah, the totally seats recline. Kind of recline, so it's almost and you, uh, you got anything on. you want as much. As, and I was sort of like I was falling asleep, and I sort of woke up, and uh, one of the heiresses was like covering me with a blanket. It was like the advert. <laughs> yeah, it, it was crazy. just brilliant. All the lights came down. Oh, and everyone comes around and says, "Do you want a massage during the flight?" 
You can have a lunchbox during the flight. Drinks, although you can't drink, you have a drink and then you fall asleep because yeah. it's so comfortable and they take the lights. So anyway, anyway it's brilliant. I can't believe my luck. So I'm driving down, <laughs> I get to the airport in my chauffeur-driven car, right, I'm sat there, I'm phoning people, my mum and dad, you never believe what I'm off to. Just, I'm just in the car, just chauffeur-driven car. And I get to the airport and I, they, you just hand your passport through the window of this car to this little woman who comes over. And I'm just there, I'm just sort of buzzing the window down, handing it to her, buzzing it back up, like I don't want to talk, check the passport, take my luggage, I don't want to discuss things. You know who I am. And she hands the passport back through the window. She says, it's expired. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I went, you are? What do you mean? She went, it's expired. I thought, it, I said, it's business class, what can you do? Can you do anything? And she went, no, you, we can send you to America, but eight hours later you'll have to just turn around and come back. They won't let you through immigration. I was like, what can I do? I gotta go to Los Angeles and talk about, like, the office and that. And she said, uh, well, it's up to you. So, um, the chauffeur-driven car drove me straight to the passport office, down, uh, in sort of, uh, Victoria, which I had to you say- back into town. So I had to come back into town. I didn't get on a plane. I'm wearing my suit, cause I thought I'd wear the suit so I look like a real player, so I'm wearing I my suit- I had the fact that you wore a suit, I wore a track suit, yeah, cause I well, thought I don't need to get upgraded. I'm first class. Exactly. I, could, I, I, I was- I wanted to go on in my pants and slippers. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, with- fact, wasn't that why she covered you with a blanket? <laughs> 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 but, uh, so they take me back down to, uh, the passport. <laughs> I don't know if you've had to go down and get your passport changed, but it, they treat you like you are an illegal immigrant, yeah, sneaking into the country. Yeah. I'm wearing a suit, I've got luggage, you know, I've cl I'm clearly a dignified kind of guy, that's obvious. I'm speaking with a certain eloquence, I've got a certain pose. <laughs> I'd just be working on it in the car. Oh, right, okay. And, um, <laughs> and they just, and they said, you've got to come back that night. So I had to come back. I had to, I had to get my passport. It photos me. Done. I had to buy a sandwich. I had enough change for the machine because it was not, a, it was an absolute nightmare. I ended up, I spent, I began the day in a chauffeur driven car on my way to Los Angeles to discuss business with, uh, Universal Television Pictures, and I spent, I ended the day on the tube <laughs> in a suit with my luggage. Stood next to one of the posters advertising this radio show, <laughs> which was just embarrassing because people kept pointing and staring and laughing. He called me, called me, like they said, Rick, I've really much. I go, go on. He went, I, my passport was fine. I went, oh, so what are you going to do? He went, he said, right, I quote, he went, I didn't know passports expired. Yeah. I went, what do you mean? I went, he went, well, your driving license doesn't. I went, what are you talking about? He said, how old do you have to be to know that? He said, he said, when will I know all these things? Yeah. <laughs> that is. When will I know all Steve, these I things? I want to just come and hug you. But do you uh, know what I mean? Uh, did you know oh. that? Did you genuinely know that your passport expired? I did because um, my passport expired because she's alive. years ago. Because she's alive. Because she's alive in the world. There is so <laughs> much stuff that I don't know because I don't think I've reached a certain age yet. I remember you walking down the street once and you said there were some roadworks and you said oh, they're probably doing those roadworks because and it's the end of the it? financial yeah, year they and they've got to spend their budget. Yeah. I thought, well, how do you know that information? Yeah, exactly. But I yeah. don't talk to cabs. <laughs> I mean, chauffeur driven cars. I put the little window up so they don't talk you? to me. How old are you? 28. Are you, old are you old enough yet to help a, a long distance lorry driver back into a car park? Definitely not. Are oh, you an idiot? Play a record. And I'm also, I've, I'm not old enough yet to be able to say, uh, uh, can I have a pint of lager, please, chief? <laughs> in a pub. <laughs> I wonder when I get to that age. <laughs> no, you're a long way off. Yeah. Another classic there from Oasis, Supersonic on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis standing hello, in for, hello. Yeah. for Carl. But where is Carl? Where is Carl? So we've failed to get in touch with him at home. Well, it, look, he doesn't Do want to be listening? contacted. He's turned up every phone off. He hasn't given uh, XFM his new home phone number. He doesn't want to be contacted. I can't believe he's not listening. To be honest, so you think he's listening now? Yeah, he listened. He listened in Manchester. If he's not listening, he's out and about. Uh, I mean, has anyone spotted Carl? What's your message to him, Rick? If he's listening, uh, get, call up. Uh huh. Anything else? More sort of call um, up or you're fired. Okay. Any bad language you want to use? Obviously, you can't really. Swear I can't really reading. say it. What sort of words? I mean, the F word. Would you say? I'd say the F word. I'd call him a, um, a twat. Um, uh, would you use the P word? I'm thinking of prick. Prick. Yeah. Okay. Definitely use that. Oh. Not, not, on, not on air, but sure. I'd call him a stupid tits? little prick. Would you, would you just say you're a tit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Little, All right. little, you stupid little bag of tits, I'd yeah. say to yeah. him. Yeah. Not, yeah. I mean, privately. What or, about or, the MF word? Because that's pretty intense. That's pretty hardcore. <laughs> do, you think, do you think that this is not appropriate now? <laughs> do you think he's, do you think that would be too, too extreme? I'm worried if I use that. And, no he was, and he was genuinely ill, sure. I'd feel, feel a, bit of a, a bit of a, a, a C word. Uh, cop, sure. Yeah. Oh, cop. Um, yeah. Because I wasn't thinking of that C word. I, I, mean, um, I mean a male 
bird. Sure, because we've got into trouble with that before. Meaning penis, and we don't mean that. Yeah, we no. don't mean penis. Um, but if, if you do, if anyone out there, sorry, sorry about that, um, th th it was a discussion about bad language, we weren't actually using it, but if any of you out there do see the little twat, get him to call <laughs> XFM immediately. Yeah, and likewise, if you're listening, Carl, uh, you cheeky MF. <laughs> um, uh, well, you sexy MF, as you, Prince once said. Yeah. Then give us a ring, because we'd love to talk to you. We just want to find just out Just call you in, we know you're listening. Little <laughs> shit. Amy Man, Red Vines. Brilliant. Lovely track. Mm -hmm. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis, in for Carl Pilkington, little. <laughs> he hasn't called. He may be Nothing. really ill. I'm feeling a bit. I yeah. Mm. How ill is he though? I mean, do you know what I mean? How ill have you got to be to not be able to make a phone call? Yeah. I find that hard I to got believe. a sore bottom and I made it in. Keep so. talking. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled a muscle in the bum. How? I don't know. And it really hurts. Have you tried to trace back through the week and figure out what yeah, made it Yeah, I went to see the osteopath yesterday. Uh -huh. He put an elbow in it for half an hour. I cried. His own? <laughs> yeah. Is it, oh, they got detachable elbows for that. Yeah. <laughs> Prosthetic <laughs> elbows. <laughs> elbows. Just hold this elbow in there for two hours and, uh, Yeah, yeah. Can I get that away? You can take that away though. I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I won't be needing that elbow <laughs> for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> we had an email about, uh, Oliver the, uh, Humanzi. For those that didn't watch it, there was a documentary last night about a, a chimp that was supposedly a human or was half Carl's human or might seem program like... ever. Yeah. For a week, Carl has been saying, it's gonna be brilliant. Oh, yeah. I wish he was here and to discuss And he's not here to discuss it, it sadly, yeah. but, um, uh, Lee Cranston has, uh, has emailed in and, uh, says, uh, I thought the best part of the Oliver program was the guy Vincent Pace, the oh, camp yeah. fellow at the piano, telling how he first met Oliver. Quote, he grabbed his female owner, turned her around and bent her over and went to mount her. Mm. I made her an offer to buy him the next day. <laughs> Vincent was then shown in a very nostalgic mood playing melancholic music. He obviously wanted some monkey action. He really- that's- yeah, that's- I mean that, it is potentially that, liable. That's liable. Like, we, we don't- we- you know, we- you know, it's a joke there. But- We it, take- I don't take any responsibility for what Lee Cranston says, or indeed the fact that he quite- he puts at the end, did he want to turn Oliver into a gay pansy? <laughs> Question mark. That's Lee's <laughs> thoughts and opinions, so they don't it necessarily you reflect those of XFM. He sees the- the- the chimp mount a human and go, I've got to have that yeah, chimp. I must have that chimp. I must have that <laughs> Shim. <laughs> oh, poor Carl. Where that, is he? Call as in. you mentioned earlier, he was very well endowed, apparently. I didn't see it myself. It was a big, it was, he a, was big a big boy. chimp. Big. Sure. A big yeah. half boy. <laughs> yeah. A big half boy, half chimp. <laughs> okay. Honestly, Juan on yeah. XFM 104.9. Right, I just called Carl again. I've been calling him all the time, trying to get through to him, right? He's changed his message, so he is listening and I've got proof. So, can you just call the number, Claire? Yeah. Right? Right, call the number. Now listen to this. This is really annoying. Well, we should tell you now that this is not a, a, an amusing sketch or setup. No. What's happening there, Claire? Not quite happening for you? No, no, this is alright. We'll, we'll try, we'll try that again. Try that again, Claire. Yeah. I'm livid now. I, 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 I'm genuinely annoyed because you'll see, when you hear the message you'll realise why. Right. I don't know who he thinks he is now. I, I, I'm beginning to wonder if, if his minor celebrity is going to his head. All this nice write-up in in Heat magazine. Yeah, it's changed him. Richard Anderson instantly has emailed in. Go on, Dickers Anderson. It's not happening, is it? Not happening, is it? Why not? Because I'm a bit stupid. Why, why can't, why I can't, can't I can't work it out? Can can't I? figure it out. How would you yeah. call someone normally? Well, normally I just pick up the phone and dial it. Sure. No, I and don't mean. Get, <laughs> no, <know>. I mean. <laughs> but it's like I have a problem getting it through the desk. I tell you what, can I play an ad break and practice? Oh, and nice. Pretend this didn't happen, and then. Do you know, in a weird way, it's, it's like, like having Carl. Here. It's like having Carl play the ads. I'll get back to you. Excellent. Bit of Snoop, never. And when did when did a bit of Snoop ever hurt anyone, Steve? Absolutely, uh, never. Right. I don't think. Okay, Carl's away. He pulled the wool over Claire's eyes. There's a few people out there that believed he was ill. I knew he wasn't. In fact, at one point I thought, maybe he is ill. Um, his message on his answer machine has changed in the last five minutes and listen to it and this is evidence that he's not ill, right? Okay. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh don't we don't? Yeah. Anderson, yeah. Richard Anderson I should just say, has, uh, yeah. has, uh, yeah. got in touch. Okay. Here we go. Hold on. Oh, Claire! No, no, I can do it. Just tell me. All right. Anderson. This is ludicrous. Yeah, so uh, obviously Richard Anderson, he's uh, easy to in his thoughts. Dickie Anders. <laughs> Anders, Dick Anders. Randy yeah. Anders. Yeah. <laughs> Dickster. Dick Meister <laughs> General. Dick Meister General. And he says there's something making 
Have we got it clear? There's something- he says, there's something making strange yelping noises in the thicket at the end of my garden. <laughs> Shall I go and prod it to see if it's calm? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, sorry I'm not in today, but not well on that. Um, no more rockbusters. I think that's what's affected me. It's got me down a bit. <laughs> so he's but, joking, um, yeah. The doctor said I'll- I'll be, uh, back swinging on my tyre in no time. So- See you later. So he was listening. He's clearly listening. He so he has, was cool. listening because we said about swinging We'd on the tyre. message. At any time. Right, Carl, call me. In fact, I'll tell you what, we play a little game. Carl would appreciate this. Call, call me, Carl, or I'm gonna give out your number. What's the first five or six digits, Claire? Well, it's 07968. 07968. Okay. Phone now, Carl. Start calling now. Right, give the next number, Claire. Uh, it's, it's, you said, you said, give the next number. One. Make one. note of this, because okay. if you want to call, call yourself- 07968, and the first number to be given out is one. He's not ill, he's- how do you feel now, Claire? Because he's made a fool of you, because well, no, you believed him. I mean, him. I actually he's made a monkey really out sorry of you. for him yeah. last night, um, but now, <laughs> past hour, I'm- I feel a little bit let down. Right, uh, uh, right, okay, so we give a number out every five minutes until Carl calls, because we know he's listening now, he's having- he's taking the piss. Um, he's not ill, obviously, you can hear that. He could- if- it, that was as long as a link, so he could have been here. Um, he could eat- definitely cool. Um, Are we leaving so this mess? Is this a message we're still leaving yeah, on his phone? Yeah. We're still leaving it. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> Good, yeah. Why um, don't we leave the rest of the show on his phone? Yeah. As a yeah, message. Leave, leave it up. He's got yeah. to listen through it all so he can delete it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, uh, the other thing of course is that he's not gonna get paid for this. No. So he- so he's thrown away 80 quid. <laughs> that's 80 right? pounds. Now, in Manchester, that's a week's wages. Easy. So he's obviously been spoiled. For, so for all his mank charm, he's down here, he's living the life of he rising. He thinks 80 quid's nothing. I, he thinks 80 quid's nothing. Already, there you could be buying what you could buying yourself a, your own horse. Yeah, you yeah. could probably get yourself a, a deposit on a flat. I sh I'd have thought so. Up I'd have thought so. Easily. Yeah, and so um, you know, on sun lamps because it's always dark. Yeah, he could he could he could go mental up there now. Dog so, piece of string. So what what so what's the first few digits we've given out? Oh seven nine six eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's and the then code. And, and then, then one. one. Okay, we give out we give give out um a number, number of Carl's phone number digits. Digits. So take that down because we love calling him. Um, should we have a little bit of feed or something? Let me just yeah. tell you what uh, what Dick has said. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He said Richard Anderson. He also said, "P.S. The show's still rubbish without Carl." <laughs> 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 still rubbish. Still rubbish without Carl. Now is that a compliment? It's still rubbish without Carl, which suggests he thought it might be better with without Carl. No, I think he's, he means it's equally rubbish. Right. Brilliant. Yeah, nothing Thanks. changes. Thanks, Dickers. Yeah, he's yeah. Dick Meister. <laughs> That's Feeder, just the way I'm feeling on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis. Well, okay. he's defying me. He's not calling in. We're going to give out his number and he's not calling in. That's even more annoying. What, who do you think he is? I don't know who he thinks he is. I, I'll tell you what he, I'll tell you who he is. Yeah. <laughs> he is a little bold mancunian. Let's never That's let him forget that. I don't know who he thinks he is, but there's the fact. I, just, Carl, call in, cos you're annoying me <laughs> and Steve. He's been slagging you off as well, Steve. Well, go on, what's In the week, saying? you know, he was slagging you off. I mean, in the week I was joining in and laughing along, but now I'm thinking I'm gonna- I'm gonna- No, but now I'm thinking that you're more on my side than he is. Thanks very much, Rick. I'm glad to see you've come round. <laughs> He said he was. Uh, I was in uh, in the in the uh, pub with him and um, uh, Johnny. All oh, right, so there's a little audience. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he went. Oh, he went. Have you seen Men in Black too? I went. No. He said. Have you, Johnny? He went. No. He went. Oh, there's there's a thing in it that looks just like Steve. Mm. And I went. What? He went. It's a thing. He's got really gangly arms and and uh, uh, bulbous eyes, and it just works really fast in the uh, aliens registration thing. And I went, oh, all right. I said, we'll bring that up Saturday. But since he's not here, you know, I th what do you think of that? Well, I, I, j I <laughs> the, the reason is that I think the problem I have with is this: that if if I was to say things like that about Carl, I'd destroy him. I, I, he'd be a broken <laughs> man after I'd finished with him. <laughs> Call in, Carl, or Steve's gonna say a few things about you. I'm gonna get a couple of home truths out there. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Yeah, we haven't- we, we were- uh, you know, at the time I was joining in, we were having- you know, slagging you off on other things as well. Sure, sure, sure. But now sure. I'm thinking, maybe I, I- Maybe you were wrong. Maybe I was- yeah, maybe I was taking the mickey out of the wrong person behind their back. <laughs> because the night from Patti Smith, co-written of course with uh, Bruce Springsteen. Oh, it was a co-write, was yes, it? Yes, indeed. He wrote yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. there you go, learning something. Learning something yeah. on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis. Yeah. No, Carl. Well, Carl's annoyed me. 
Um, he's not playing. He's not ill. Another digit um, from the number? Uh, yeah, just do one more digit, Claire. Are you serious, Sam? Yeah. Yeah. Five. Five. Yeah. Five. Good. five, so one five. Okay, great. We'll just we'll keep doing that. But I'll tell you what, the best revenge is living well. Indeed. Why don't we just do a brilliant remaining fifty minutes of, of show okay. and show the people that we don't need Carl. High five. Let's okay, do it. you don't need Carl. Ooh, right, let's uh, go. Starting now. Some now. brilliant some brilliant stuff. Oh <laughs> I just You gonna say something? Yeah, I yeah. No I I remember when I was, I remember when I was growing up in Manchester. No, you can't. Can I, oh, to, oh, to, oh, to, oh, it's funny to me. I tell you, X of um, one two point nine. I said no. Oh, I saw it, I, a, a weird thing. I saw what was you know um, we're in Leicester Square. I was coming through. Try I saw a hairy Chinese kid. Mm, no, I don't. That's it, it was that's weird because they're not usually hairy, are they? E, did I tell you about me auntie Flora? <laughs> Is that Steve? supposed to be Manchester? Did I e buy Eck as like. Did I tell thee about me Auntie Flora, who shat herself for three hours once? Did I tell you? Oh, e, I don't. Uh, d oh, there was a woman born Carl, once. Carl, you have to phone us. We've Carl. got nothing. Oh God, he's so annoying. Little twat. That's the uh, new one from Blur. Uh, out of time. Only three now. Probably had a sort of Carl equivalent. Who sort of thought, well, I can't, I can't be bothered. Graham Cox and yeah. they're probably at home <laughs> listening to that. <laughs> exactly. Playing guitar and they've called up and said, well, you, you could play along. He went, no, I'm ill. Yeah. Oh, I'm ill. Come on, Graham, just, if, if <laughs> you're playing, I, I can hear you playing guitar now. No. No, I'm ill. Yeah. <laughs> Have they replaced Coxon? No. They haven't no. replaced him? No. Oh, right. Well, they probably will do when they go on tour, but I think they aren't yeah. interested. Well, in I, I play guitar, I don't know. <laughs> That's true enough, you're <laughs> pretty hot so, on the, uh, If, uh, Diamond, you want someone to, uh, Oh, actually, Steve, in, in, in answer to your question, for the live dates, uh, it's one of the blokes from the Verve. Oh, ex Verve, it's a shame. remember? Did she interrupt me again? I Sorry, think so. Mate. I'm a fear in it. God, I can't I think I, I was talking. Yeah, yeah, I don't no. know if you were. Uh, you know, I'm, I might be mental, but I think I was talking. <laughs> Claire, wh when's your radio show on? Normally, <laughs> <laughs> well, when do you host a radio show? Am I allowed to plug it? Go on, yeah, go on. Tell us. Monday to Thursday, 9 pm. Well, maybe, maybe we'll come along and start talking well, over I, you. No, I'm just wondering, Rick, I'm just wondering, who's listening at that time? My I mean, what we, we, we've got a listening. prime time which everyone is sat at home listening on a Saturday afternoon, Claire. Yeah. It's one of the best radio yeah, slots no in the business. no one's going to football matches or shopping or anything like that. No, 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 no. I want a piece of the action, I need it. Yes. I need well, it. Well, you've got it. And, they're, they're, um, they're playing a few, um, dates here and there, old oh, Blur, old oh, yeah. Blur. <laughs> Good. And that's off their new album, probably, with all the other songs and <laughs> yeah. that. Rick, I was watching TV last night. I just, sure. um, I think it might have been during the monkey show, actually, I'm not sure, but there was an advert and it reminded me of a little crush that I just felt I should express. Because I wonder if, you know, I've often used the platform in the past to just express my feelings for people. Yeah. And I've, I realised now, for many, many years, I've had a big crush on the Scottish Widow from the Scottish Widow adverts. The she's, I, I just, I just want to say to her, you know. Is it because she's sort of mysterious and hooded? Partly that. It's also because I know, I guarantee she's available. Because she's just lost she's her husband. A widow. Yeah. And I just think it's time to stop grieving. I think you've been grieving too long. I think, I want to say to her, you're a beautiful lady. That's and she's probably, she's and she's probably got a big lump sum. I'm thinking she's probably got a sizable amount of cash. Yeah. She's obviously got a lot of spare time on her hands, not working or raising kids because she's wandering across the moorlands most yeah, of the time. Yeah, her kids are probably grown up. I'm thinking it's time or, to- Or, that, or they turn to crack or something. But I'm just saying this, I think it's just time to say, yes, he was a great man. He was a good man. He was a lovely guy. He worked but hard he's gone. Well. He's it's gone. time to move on. He wouldn't want to see you like this. No. Still grieving after 25 years. No, he'd want- he'd want to see her being humped by a big lanky thing with steamed up glasses, I reckon. I'll be honest with you, he hasn't got much say in the matter. He's dead. Well, alright, don't get nasty. And she's, frankly- She's still not she over- She is it. squandering that money. She could be out- she could be in Europe, she could be- be on, in Barbados or Hawaii, she could be spending that cash. She could get, she could lose the hooded short and maybe slip into a nice bikini. Do you know what? I think she's, she's wearing, kept herself in shape. I reckon she's wearing nothing under that. That's shroud. what I'm thinking. Dirty <laughs> slut. And I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming as she's Scottish, uh, that he she was a little bit thrifty. She couldn't wait for him to go. She couldn't wait for the poor bloke to go. He was obviously, I bet he was a little bit thrifty. He's probably got quite a lot stashed away that she's slowly working away through. Yeah. And I'm, oh, I want to find dong. out. I want to find out how he died. Yeah, I'm Cause intrigued. Because if, because if, if I find it's like, oh, it's, it, there, was a, there, there was a roller skate on the top of the stairs, <laughs> exactly. I'm going to reopen the investigation. If it was in any way suspicious. Yeah, yeah. Questions. So, your husband's dead, and she went, oh no, where's the money? Yeah. <laughs> 
Steve Absolutely. Merchant's outside. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Built like a donkey. Yeah. He's built like a he's built like Oliver the chimpanzee. Yeah, and he wants to get at it. Yes, he's so bought his tandem. It's <laughs> yeah, hop on the back. We're going off to the moors. Yeah, he's tr he's going to fly executive class. <laughs> yeah, his passport is valid. <laughs> I know he that. Knows that much. He's got another ten years <laughs> on the passport. <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you what, the boys from Blur, they don't rock. Sure. Should we show them how to rock with a bit of bad company? It. It's a classic. Turn it up, Claire. Bad company. Can't get enough of your love. I'm in a rock mood because yeah, Carl's made my blood boil. Yeah. Really. I mm. might even play a song, you're probably too young, called uh, Spirit of the Radio by Rush. It's sort of like for rockers, I put it like that, it's like the ultimate sort of pomp, uh, rock, progressive pop song ever. Uh -huh, it's it's uh -huh. it's classic. Yeah, you, can, you can you can you you might hate it or you'll love it, um, or you listen to it ironically. I love it. Well, you know, I, I just, I, I was listening to Led Zeppelin recently. I never really understood the rock phenomenon before, but I just understand it now. It just gets in your blood. It's yeah. extraordinary. Crank yeah. it up loud and it is just visceral and amazing. And, uh, I wish I could play the guitar. Sure. Do you know what I feel like doing? What? Writing a little sort of hymn or a ballad. About to Carl? To Carl. Yeah. We've tried threatening him. That's not worked. Give up one more digit. We got half hour to go for it because they're three digits. So it's O. What is it? O. O seven nine six eight. Yeah. One five. Next digit, please. Seven. Okay. One five right. seven. I Excellent. hope you're making a note of that. You'll be able to phone Carl, leave messages, tell him what you think of him. Uh, unless he phones, he can stop this at any time by just simply calling it's here in the studio. He can just call and say, "Okay, don't." Uh, uh, he can just call and say, "Please don't give my number out," and I go. As I always do when I'm winding him up and I'm slapping his head and I'm sort of like spitting on him and stuff, eventually he goes, shout, stop it, and I go, we well, only had to ask. Exactly. So if he calls, I go, you only had to ask. Yeah. Flaming Lips on uh, XFM 104.9. Well, we got through it without Carl. I think so, yeah, I've enjoyed myself. Didn't mention him much, did we? No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think we need so. him. I always quite enjoy it when he's absent, actually. I, I like know, because, Clary. yeah, because we can have a nice chat as opposed to yeah. him just going, Yeah. remember when I had Chinese air and they were old women yeah. eating their own legs. It's and just my dad put things, eh? a forest gump in a wheelie bin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Claire pr brings a certain kind of level of class to it, dare I say that, you know. She, yeah. She's inept in her own way. In her own way, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, know, there's no one, oh no, no, there's no, there's no one any good working no, out. I mean, no, 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 I don't no, want to no, give no, you no, that no, there's, no, there's no, like, proper, uh, I, 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 pr the only proper DJ is probably Camfield, yeah. I'd have thought, because he's been, in, he's, he's nearly thirteen now and he's been in the, <laughs> yeah. he's been in the radio twelve and a half years. Yeah. Um, yeah. see, he took, they, they tested him and he's half human, half Vance. <laughs> yeah. Which is, <laughs> which is quite Yeah, he's got quite weird. a lot of, I think he's got the 48 chromosomes yeah. that Tommy Vance has got. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, makes one Tommy Vance. Yeah, Tommy Vance, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and a little bit extra. Yeah, well, because one of those chromosomes is pure Jack Daniels. Well, yeah, it's yeah. It's just Jack Daniels chromosome. It's, it's, it's well, corresponds yeah, yeah. exactly to a and Jack there's, Daniels. And there's some, uh, Lemmy genes, <laughs> exactly. which I think you'll find. In there as well. In there. But, um, uh, although, I'll tell you what, I, I share with Camfield a, a, a couple of loves. Um, I, I agree that one of the greatest programmes of all time is Columbo. Columbo is brilliant. It is. Amazing, yeah, and uh, they're, they're showing them. All, there's so many channels showing them now. I think Granada Plus show them. I think BBC show them. Yeah. I think I uh, everyone's got a bit. I of think it. he's it's made um, eighteen thousand episodes. Are apparently. they still making them though? Uh, I think no, they keep I th they, up. no, they did in the nineties. They're they're not quite as good, but I think the original ones they're great. He's got this great character, and I share that with him. I, you know, I do like a bit of rock. I th should we play Rush? It's just oh, spirit of the radio. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we get we get canned by people who like new metal and blur and that and, the, and those tr trendy bands, all that the yeah. kids bands and yeah, that. But you it? think this is pure? Yeah, I pure don't rock. think this would feature in X-ray magazine. We've got some great bands in them. They've got Kaloop, they've got <laughs> Demp, they've got Flap Nibble coming out with their new single. It's an EP yeah. and uh, Strep, the oh, early, excellent. not the not the latest Strep, no. the early Strep, the unrecorded years, which is the only ones I like by Strep. And uh, that guy in it, you know, the, the drummer Kibble, he's gone. He's got his own. He's going fringy. He, he's in for a chat uh, with Christian on the breakfast show, where you could win a trip to O'Neill's in Camden. <laughs> this is Rush. <laughs> 
and Spirit of the Radio, <laughs> everything in that. <laughs> let's look quick. Let's put every type of music. Okay, go to reggae, into rock. Okay, look, opera, opera. <laughs> go, go mental now. Go mental on the drums. Double that. Double the foot. How many, how many bass drums have you got? Just to what? Go mental on it. <laughs> yeah. Right. It is obscene. That is everything in that, isn't it? <laughs> how long is it? Like four and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. That's that's lovely. They def people don't play music like that that's anymore. So, there's only three of them. I just Is there think only three of them. Yeah, there's that. And just w one day in Canada, yeah, they just went right. We might we're, let's make. We're only gonna write one single. Yeah. So let's put every type of music <laughs> exactly, into that yeah. single. It's almost like a stars on forty five. Yeah. Version of music of yeah. all time of of, 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 every, of every music rock. they've heard exactly. Yeah. Brilliant. Good, are they still it? going? Do they still Catch play? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. But that was for Camfield. That was bad company there in Rush for Camfield. Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> that was for Camfield as well. The A team. <laughs> Do you remember once when we were talking about the A team and I was slagging it off on your show in the old XFM? Yeah. Yeah. And I was going, I, I mean, the, the, I quite like the A team, but it is too, it's sometimes it's too far fetched to enjoy without it being ironic or it being for kids. And, um, I, I could hear fuming from outside. I could feel <laughs> him going, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know who to call. He wanted to call Vance or someone or Lemmy. He didn't know, <laughs> right? And then I, I, I said, um, and uh, if you can't find the, 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 you know, find the A team, they out, they outwit the might of the FBI every single week. But an old woman who's having trouble with her landlord can find them. Yeah. And the door burst <laughs> open, <laughs> and Campy went. That is because Hannibal sometimes disguises himself as an elderly Chinaman. <laughs> yeah. And that was his explanation for yeah. the whole series. Yeah. Ah, oh, that was for Camfield. Yeah, that's lovely. That's for his twelfth birthday, which is coming yeah, up very 13th. soon. Oh, he's thirteen. 13, yeah, 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 yeah. Teenager. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna rock, Steve. Indeed. All oh, the phones going. Play that. Break a lance. Oh, phone. it might that's be Carl. Wow, here's a bit of a turn up for the books. Carl Pilkington on the line. Right. Yeah, where you been? I'm off there, aren't I? Right. Okay, what's the matter with you? Just, um, just a bit bunged up and that, and it's got the shakes, it's got that sort of, that shaky thing to get. Yeah, that's because you didn't eat last time when Suzanne was at work. Yeah, well, I think that's what brought it on. Plus, she was away in the week and I put some wet jeans on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I think that's what's caused the problem. Well, <laughs> when did you put them on your head? No, they were just on the maiden and the, the legs felt dry, but they just were- Just on the what? On the what? Have you- have on got the maiden? maiden? What was she doing there? <laughs> what do you mean? On the maiden that you put clothes on. What? You Your clothes, clothes horse? Maiden. Your clothes horse. Well, yeah. Right, okay, so you put wet jeans on, yeah? So, uh, that's why I'm ill on that. I'm right. I'm having a good time, I've been watching the football. So you're just sitting at home watching telly, where you could have been sitting here? Well, I would have been better off there, because I've got a chair there. I've got no chair at home at the moment. Cause Why? I sold it last week. <laughs> Why did you sell a chair? I what, you only had one chair? You, what? Look, can't we just, um, I just was calling up to let you know I was alright and that. We're not interested in that, we want to know about the chair. <laughs> I sold it, I had a little two-seater and the, I sold it because I'm getting a new one, but I've got to wait another month. So, so you've got to that. sit on the floor for so a month? So you sold a chair before you had another one? Well, she might not have wanted to buy it in a, in a month or something. So I got rid of it whilst I could. She was alright, buddy. We'll talk about that next week. Oh, you're gonna be in next week? I look forward to that then. That's a dynamite piece of radio to tune in for. The yeah. day Carl sold a chair. Brilliant. Alright. Are you alright then? It's going alright. But why did you take this long to call? We asked you to call since the because very beginning. We've been that. phoning you. Why is your phone yeah, so short? I heard the beginning. I, I heard the beginning of the show. I thought, yeah, it's going alright. The there and stuff. Turned it off. Um, you fact, turned it off! No, no, I put a tape in though, because even though I'm ill, I'm still showing an interest in it. Well, you're not, um, if you're watching football and shaking. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll listen back to it later, so I hope you haven't been dissing me. No. Right? no. Definitely not. Don't so listen back to it, it's not worth it, but we haven't been dissing yeah. you, no. And I've just been watching, uh, a bit of football, right? Did you watch the monkey program last night? You told us to watch yeah. the monkey program, we all stayed and watched the monkey program. Alright, wasn't it? Rubbish, that? wasn't it? Obviously, obviously not half chimp, half human. Well, I mean, they, they missed out a lot of the, the interesting bits. They didn't have any interesting bits. Those are the bits that you made up to make no, it more the interesting. Bits, the bits that I told you about about three months ago before they decided to make the programme. Yeah. What were the bits that you came up with? Well, they, they missed out the bits about, uh, you know, the zookeeper. 
Well, there wasn't a zookeeper, yeah, go on. Well, there was, but they left that bit out. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> fine. Out, and they left, and they, they left out the bit where it ran from there <laughs> in oh, 1975? In terms of the, those that did research, they actually went and filmed it, you read it on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Chances are you're the one with the facts wrong. Yeah, they, they, uh, they, I think they also left out the bit when it jumped over three double-decker buses on a, <laughs> yeah, motorbike. on Evil Knievel's motorbike. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Not only do you not bother turning up, but you turn off the radio and start watching football. Oh, uh, yeah, I turned it off, but I've, I've recorded it. I'll listen back later and, and sort of Well, what good is that? Sort of, I, I like to keep, you know, keep it in shape and that. I'll have a word next week. All right. If you receive any phone calls from people you don't know, we don't know anything about that. <laughs> Instantly, we don't know why why that is happening. That is just going to be a weird, spooky <laughs> thing. So, and, and don't bother telling the story about um, Men in Black Two either, because I don't think people will be interested. Um, uh, actually, on the subject of Steve, Men in Black Two, <laughs> what? Have you seen that, Steve? No, I haven't, Carl. Tell oh, me about I think it. You should see it. Go on. Why? Because there's this, there's this, um, there's this thing in it. <laughs> Go on. Uh What, a stupid, bald, mancunian tosser? No, weirder than that. <coughs> there isn't anything weirder than that. <laughs> hey guys, it was gangly. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> and, uh, you've got to see it, because you wouldn't believe out the likeness and that. You've got to see it out tonight. <laughs> right. It's not as weird, it had a normal voice, right? <laughs> Yeah. I'll tell you what, mate, it ain't worth coming in next week. <laughs> oh, oh, stay on the line, Carl. Play a record player. <laughs> Kings of Leon, Molly's Chambers. What do you think of that, Carl? Alright. <laughs> There's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another I'll insightful tell you what, remark. Steve is not a, a fan now. Not only does he know you've been slagging him off behind his back. No, I wasn't slagging Steve. If you get it out on the DVD tonight, you'll know I'm not slagging you off. It could be your brother. <laughs> 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 I love the fact that he, it makes it worse, but he's thinking, you're gonna go, oh, he wasn't slugging me off, it does look like me. I do think I'm an alien. I love the fact that you hope Steve will go, he's got a point. It's the, it's, no, it's a spitting image. Yeah. I am, seriously, Carl, I'm really angry. I'm so angry with you at the moment. You haven't seen it yet. No, I know, because I know what it's gonna be, and I'm just, I'm Why? I'll what? tell you why I'm angry, because he doesn't do it in jest. Yeah, but what do you think it's gonna look like? What do you think this thing's gonna look like? Gonna look ludicrous. It's not gonna look anything like me. But he's gonna, like, pretend it does. Go on, what? Go on! No, it does look like you. Yeah, of course it does. And you looked like the, uh, human Z. Well... I mean, to be honest, you did a bit, Carl. You walked like him, you bowled like him, you got a sort of gormless face like him. Any more? I don't smoke. That does. I'm not arguing with you, I'm not well on that. <laughs> oh, you're not well. What exactly is wrong with you, you whinger? Well, uh, it's just, do you know, like I, I always tell you about the, um, restless leg syndrome I've got. <laughs> it's like that, yeah. but all over. So you're <laughs> just shaking around the house? I'm just, yeah. What do you look like, Elvis? What are you doing, you're shaking around the I'll house? I'll tell you, with your bald head, you're probably like an enormous vibrator. <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> That's what you probably look like if you strip <laughs> naked. Oh, you'll have the Scottish widow coming round. Oh, dear. That's, what's the name, by the way? I heard you talking about that. That's, um... Amanda Lamb. Amanda Lamb, who's in the Place in the Sun programme. Is she actually a widow? <laughs> Is she a Scottish widow? Uh, just, just, uh... man, my husband's <laughs> dead. Do you want any money and a bit of my clam? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. All right. That's the sort of uh, quality you've missed out on today. Well, anyway, you're going to be back next week. I can't, we, we we need you back next week. Yeah. Yep. Well, do you know? That's also, how did you know you were going to be ill today? Because you phoned and arranged this yesterday. Convenient. And I spoke yeah, to you yesterday, yeah, and you didn't yeah, sound very I felt, ill. I felt ropey yesterday. Afternoon. You've got a bit of a bunged up nose. Even now, <laughs> I'm I have a bit of a bunged Even up nose. Ill, I still sorted it out. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm a little bit sweaty. Paul, sorting out does not mean you phone up Sturgis and send her down. That's not sorting it out. That's making things worse. <laughs> Have you learnt nothing? Thanks, Claire. If you're not part of the solution, you're part All of the right, problem. Mate. Yeah. Ah, oh, my little, my legs a little bit achy. <laughs> oh, wearing wet jeans. Oh, I put wet jeans on again. I have on me, on me, my lasagna wasn't, it was frozen. Can you hear the venom and hatred in our, in our voices today? We genuinely are upset and angry with you. Yeah. 
Can't believe it. I cannot believe that you d I mean, oh. Right, well the thing is, the, the, we'll be back to normal next week, right? We've got Billy Elliot doing the film <laughs> next week. Right. Uh Any prizes? Got some good stuff. Have you got any films with Burt Reynolds in to give away on VHS? And well, uh, I'll see you then. Great, we're looking forward to it already. I'll see you later. All see right. you later. Hot, hot, heat, bandages, XFM, we're off, innit? That's it, it's all over. Yeah. Back next week. Yeah. Thanks, Claire. Bye. Total yeah. respect. Yeah. Yes. Nice one. Keep it real. Clocks from the cold play <laughs> on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and back. Carl Pilkington. Hey. He's raring to go. It's nice when you have a bit of time off, isn't it? Yeah, how long have you had off now, About then, three Carl? weeks. About, about three, three weeks, 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 yeah. Um, we can't do that because we're sort of self-employed and we'd be letting people down, but it's different when you, you know, you get paid anyway whether you turn up or not, but good to have I'm you never, back. I'm, I'm never off ill. No, That's the first time I've no, ever I been just, off ill. Well, well, no, I mean, just, just, you're off two weeks and then you're off. No, I just wish I was the kind of person who could let down an audience I know, of, of regular really, listeners. Yeah. yeah, but I will, like I say. Well, no, we spoke to you, you weren't that bad. A cold, you don't go home for a cold. Um, we were discussing this last night in the pub, and, uh, you know, you don't go home for a cold. Um, okay, then, so moving on, what have we got then? We've got some great cold, songs. Though. I've brought in so. The Smiths, I've brought in Buzz Cox, I've brought in Neil Young. I know Steve's got some hip hop. Some great hip hop. Uh, I've got some great Elvis Costello. It's, it's gonna be great. Uh, Carl, come on, concentrate. You've been away for three weeks. It's a noise. No, stop saying that. What? You're annoying me now. Why? Oh, what do you do? Go in ill? Oh, oh, he's annoyed me. Oh, has he? Yeah, I got a bit of and I'm a little bit annoyed. Can I have some time off but still get paid? Yes, of course you can. Steve, Carl. right? He called me up, winding me up about this. And right, I'm I'm nearly th I'm thirty. Right, I'm thirty now. <laughs> I can only remember being off two times. Oh, his memory's going as well. You have some time <laughs> off. <laughs> and both of them were when I, when I was at school. School? One, what one, school? One when it was windy. Why did yeah. you have time off? Because it was windy. But to be honest, Carl, that lasted no, no, for wait. seven years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your time wait, off wait, at school. Wait. Why did you have time off? Because it was windy. Were you windy, or was it windy outside? No, it was, it was a really. It was like when your when auntie it, wasn't out the window, was she? Yeah. When the winds were bad in the seventies, I mean, I'm said, "Oh, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I remember space offers and flares. I don't yeah. remember the winds being bad in the seventies. <laughs> well, my, my mum just said, uh, "You might get blown into the road, so don't." Go <laughs> <laughs> she had so much faith in you, didn't she? As a human being. Is that why she got fired from the pie shop? <laughs> I'm not coming in today, I might get blown into god the room. The, oh god. The funny god. thing it was, right, Steve, they, they had this, this thing going at school, because a lot of people used to wag it back then. Right? Used to what? Wag it, sort of not go in. Yeah. Right. Right. And, um, they sort of tried to make it interesting for you by giving you a- An education. A certificate. A certificate right. if you yeah. did a full week. Re reward for the rest yeah, of your exactly, life with yeah. achievement. That right. sort of- that sort of carrot. And mm. also, like, let you go home at three o'clock on a Friday. Right. right. If, if you'd done a- like, a full week and that. Right? Yeah. So it was, uh, it was lovely weather all week. Then it just ch sort of changed on a Friday. And I got off and it was all windy. It was windy said, for Friday on the 7th, isn't it? <laughs> uh, don't- don't, you know, if you don't want, don't go in because, you know, you might get blown into the road and that. So I said, alright, then I'll stay off. And, uh, so why did she uh, <laughs> told you to hold on, hold on to a fence or <laughs> yeah. walk you there? What's this don't go out? <laughs> Immediately like give up. I love this getting blown into the road. Is that based on your cats that kept getting blown into the road? Well, so I got to, got to school on the Monday, right? And the teacher said, right, long time. today, uh, to punish you, you're the only one who wrecked the whole week, right? Everyone else came in, you didn't. So everyone else is going home at three o'clock today. But you're not. Brilliant. Serves you right. And, uh, and I wasn't bothered though, it was great because I said, well, you'll have to stay with me, won't you? And Brilliant. it was great. So all I did for half an hour was doodle and stuff. It was great that afternoon. Yeah. And that, that was ages ago. That was like when I was about eight. And that's one of the times I was off ill. Yeah. So it was, I, but that wasn't even ill, that was wind. Yeah. Well, yeah. So right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit different when you're to to be the honest adult with you. world though, Carl. You can't just not turn up because you've got a bit of a cold or you're a bit fed up. I mean, we had an appointment four o'clock Thursday, wasn't it? And he had to call. He said, "I'll cancel it." Oh, I went on meeting went on a bit late. Yeah. Time management, get things done. If it was important, you'd get it done. Play a record, Carl. Pull your finger out, please. Elvis Costello, Alison. What a great track that mm. is. Beautiful. Well, Carl, we'd better tell them all the new great features we've come up with in the time you were off. <laughs> right, well, we'll, uh, we've got the film thing still going. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
That's where you take a lead role or a, or, or a major role in a, in a Hollywood blockbuster, which we then give away on VHS worth six ninety nine. <laughs> and uh, something new we're trying out because Rockbusters. He's dead, thankfully. Yes. He's uh, he's gone for a bit. It's over. Um, crosswords. Crosswords. Oh, this sounds intriguing. Where would you get the idea from? What's the, what's the basic uh, <laughs> format of this? Right, what, I, what I've done is I've yeah, um, yeah. take te- like a, a popular saying from the show. A popular yeah. what? A popular saying, something that crops up quite a lot in the show. In our show? Yeah. Yeah. Um, first thing that spring, sort of sprang to mind was uh, there's this airy Chinese kid. Oh, okay. classic. But more, more commonly it would be something like, Carl, you're an idiot. Yeah, play Carl, record, you idiot. you're a fool. Where, Carl, you're a fool. Oh, what did you mean? You let us down again. Yeah, you Carl, where have here. you been? Yeah, oh, you... you've got a headache, have you, Carl? Yeah. You better have a lie oh. down. Typical yeah. phrases like that, Yeah, sure. typical phrases like that, yeah, yeah. Carl, you're a loser. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And, um, what I've done, I've got a load of different songs and took words <laughs> from the different songs and then joined them together yeah. to make There's This Airy Chinese Kid. And then people have to email in and say what the five songs were. It sounds like the most complicated game ever. I'm looking forward to it. You, have you heard any of this, Rick? Because I've not heard this at all. Yeah. I'm not familiar with this. Well, all it is, it, it, it'll go like, Eric hey, Chinese kid! And that's, it's from sort of four different songs. Right. And you've got to identify the songs. Right. Uh, wow. How many songs in this, Carl? Five. You're... Five. There's this hairy Chinese kid. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> and uh, what are the prizes for that? Are yeah. these the prizes? Yeah. Alright, well let me tell you what they are. They're not too bad actually. We've got, um, Live Forever, which I assume is a, a CD that ties in with this new Think film. Think of that! A well-known phrase from the show, and it's Hairy Chinese Kid. <laughs> yeah. What other- where would you There is no that other radio show in, in the life? world! I- this is- go on. If you've just tuned in, yeah, I mean, what, what are you thinking? you think if you've just tuned in, you go, well-known phrase from the show, Hairy Chinese Kid. <laughs> oh yeah, classic. <laughs> They'll be playing that in charades this Christmas. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is uh, a CD that ties in with this new film, Live Forever, which was, is all about uh, Britpop, and so there's stuff on there from Oasis, Blur, Pulp, etc. Uh, we've also got uh, another Red Dwarf DVD, uh, Marion and Jeff, the first series of that, excellent. <coughs> That's on VHS, sadly, but uh, never mind. And um, and also uh, the very best of Led Zeppelin, a two CD set there with uh, all the classics on. So that's not no. bad prizes, that actually. Is, you've we've done yourself we've proud. It. We've upped it. We're getting serious now. We're playing in the you know the bigger league. It's, we've upped the stakes. We want Heat Magazine not to, you know, lose touch with us just because Rockbusters is gone. Yeah. I think they're still behind us. We're so we've got, we've got, we've uh, got, we've got film, you appear in a film, we've mm. got, uh, crosswords. How is that to do with the crossword? Because I've got words and sort of cross them. Okay. Right, you don't really <laughs> cross them. But, uh, good. So words, we're playing a game called Words. <laughs> word Song. Hello and welcome to Word Song. <laughs> Brilliant. And, uh, and obviously I imagine there'll be some more great music. But we've got a new feature, haven't we? Which one's this? Are we doing, um, Within the Monkey News, the new oh, feature? Oh, Steve. I'm excited. You know Monkey News is my favourite feature, so what have you uh, added to it? Explain it. Right, well, uh, there's been loads of stuff going on in the past few weeks, right? Uh, but for the times when I struggle, when, when sort of monkeys have had a quiet week, <laughs> and there isn't that much news going on, sure. right? come up with this thing. I sort of speak to an expert. I've, I've spoke to him already. You, right? spoke, you spoke to an expert? Yeah. A monkey expert? Yeah. Uh-huh. And I ask him a question. Wow. Right. The feature, it's got a good name. You know, that's the way I work. Yep. Cheapest chimps. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. And what I do, I ask them a question about, you know, oh, how much does it cost to, you know, keep one? How much does it cost to, you know, feed one for a week? Yeah. All this sort of stuff. So I, I give out like a monkey story, and if that isn't enough for people, they'll also learn something else at the end of it. Right. Yeah. So like... It sounds fascinating, can I say right now? Yeah. That's just some of the things that we've come up with. Play a record, Carl. Please still continue to listen there. Yeah. Baby, come on, come on down. Richard Ashcroft, buy it in bottles on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, I need the phone number of your girlfriend. Let me explain why. I was lucky enough, once again, to be on your quiz team. 
yeah. this week. Um, uh, Ricky, still to beat me. He's still to beat me with his team. Yeah. We, second, uh, second I came. We, uh, we, the, the, the gang here and some friends, we uh, sometimes go down to a pub quiz in the local area. And um, I was very nice. I was invited by Carl to be on his team. Uh, twice now I've been on that team. Uh, Ricky's always on another team. And um, I, what can I say, Carl? I, 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 do you mind me saying this now? Because I've, I've, I've analysed the team, and it's your, very much your team, and, uh, and you've put the team together, you've recruited some excellent personnel, your girlfriend's uh, very, very good on the team, yeah. as is one of her uh, work colleagues, and uh, you normally bring in, you know, someone like myself. I like to think I'm providing certain something with the entertainment section. I seem to remember last time I answered at least six or seven questions that other people hadn't got, so uh, I felt I, I provided something there. Um, Carl, I, I rather like John Harvey Jones, who used to be called in to sort of troubleshoot companies. I see why you are not winning, ever. And it's a rather pricey uh, contest, isn't it? It costs a tenner to enter per Each. person. Yeah, yeah. And unless you get in the top three, you're not, you're not going to get to see your money back. Yeah. So um, I think you're going to maybe need to step down from the team, because, Carl, oh. I'm not sure. I am not sure. Oh. You, you consider yourself a kind of player manager, but frankly, I'm not sure you're providing enough. Right. See, this is, this is funny, because... As bad as I imagine you are, I don't think Steve would make it into my team, so he's getting a bit cocky here. I want to know what your opinion of him, because he's told me he's great on it. Well, it you, you bang out of order, first of all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you have a good night when you're with us? Um, I tell you what, I wish I'd, I wish I hadn't lost a tenner every time I've come down. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that well, would have improved it. You <laughs> point out there about the football analogy. Mm-hmm. Alex Ferguson, yeah. when did he score a goal? Right. He doesn't. He tells the others how to do it. Mm. Yeah. Right? Mm. That's, that's my role. He doesn't take up one of the eleven, though, does he? No, exactly. It's not like you can only field ten. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> we only got ten again. I, yeah. I want to be in the eleven. <laughs> exactly. He's not running around in midfield, <laughs> no, falling no. over. Yeah, shouting, oh, what have I told you? Yeah. No. Right. I'll admit, And right? there's a limit of five players. We should explain that. That's the point. Yeah, there's only five players there's on the players, team. Yeah, so, yeah, so. But, it was pretty tricky on Tuesday, though, wasn't it? It was one of the tougher... T t tell tell everyone the one question you got right. It was oh. something about, uh... Well, tell us the answer. The two words you had to say to get the answer. Danny Minogue. Danny Minogue. <laughs> <laughs> that was what you provided, Danny Minogue. <laughs> Is this valuable? As well, no, 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 FG not really, because because, because there was at least two of us who also knew the answer. Oh, well, he, uh, we, we he gave him, we gave him, we, provide, no, exactly, we gave it to Carl. We massaged his ego, oh, but dear. um, oh. I just feel Carl. I, 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 do you know what? I'm a little, I feel a bit bad now because I just sort of either had a crushed face. Then. Let, let, can I just it, tell it, you right it, now? He just can't believe this. Can I just tell you right now? I think the problem is this. I th there's that precious fifth position that is not being filled at the moment, I think consistently enough by a decent player, right? You've got a solid team. I'm thinking if you want to remain on the team, you are going to have to pull your finger out and find a fifth member that is going to provide, and I'll tell you where the weaknesses are, I can tell you right now, mate, the weaknesses are natural history and science. Oh. Something which Ricky Gervais is scoring on week in, week out on his team. There's, there is a few Now, if he was available for a transfer, we could be fine, but we've got to find someone to fill in that space. Otherwise, I'm either going to quit or you're going to have to step down, because I don't think I can be on a team where, where, where there is these obvious pounds. deficiencies. There and, are visible deficiencies and in the And, you know, the ten pounds. That's ten pounds. I'm not made of money. <laughs> That's once a month. I've, I've seen him depressed for two hours when he lost twenty pounds at a casino don't after bring five it back. hours don't bring, don't bring that back. Don't yeah. bring up that again. Yeah, yeah. That, that story. He doesn't like wasting money, Carl. You know that. What do you think? What do you think? What's the solution? We've got to be- we've got to think proactively now. We've got to sort this out. See, there's always other things going on in my mind when I'm in that pub quiz. For me, it's just a little bit of fun. Sure. It's a night out. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Suzanne enjoys it. Yeah. Bit of a get together. We have a chat beforehand. Yeah. We have a bit of fun. Yeah. But there was other things on my mind. What well, Carl, thinking? I could do that here. I don't no, have wait, to lose a tenner. Wait, what were you thinking during the quiz then when the questions were coming out? What were you thinking of? Well, what it was, right, just before the quiz started, I had to go to the toilet, right? Because the rule is, right, people who don't go to it, once it starts, phones off, oh, yeah, no more toilet. Room, we yeah. take it dead serious, don't yeah, we, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I went to the toilet. Now, I'm not being out of order here, it just got me thinking, right? I went to the toilet, the gay fella in there, right? There was a gay fella in there? Gay fella in the toilet. Now, well, how, how could you, you tell? How did you know? Just typical, you know, everything about it, right? It? Everything about it, right, yeah. Oh. What, large like handlebar oh. moustache, leather what, what, cap. But, butt plugs, ammo nitrate. Could I just say that... 
These views do not reflect the views of the management of XFM or me and Steve. Or most Carl. of the people in this country. On go you on, go. go on, Carl. What's your problem? Yeah, but this is what I'm worried about, really. But this is why I only got Danny Minogue right, <laughs> right? Because this was floating around my mind. <laughs> She's a big guy, I can't now, she? going to the toilet, they have, they have, like, men's cubicle and they have women's cubicle. Yeah. Now, without sounding out of order, is it wrong for me to think <laughs> gay men should have their own little cubicle. Colin! They should have their own- well not cubicle, you mean an actual toilet, yeah. I suppose. When I was at the urinal, yeah. normally, you know, there's a fella there and then you go, alright, and there's no pressure. But I couldn't- I couldn't go. I was thinking, should I wait? If I go into the toilet, it'll look obvious. Yeah. I had loads of pressure and but this was going on. what were you worried on. about? I'm so sorry. What I'm were you so concerned sorry, about? Viewers. I'm so well, sorry. Well, it's like, right, listen, when I was a kid, right, <laughs> And it's all right for you to go into women's toilets when you're a kid. It's like, oh, it's a bit cute, yeah. right? As long as you're not like over 15 or something, right? Right. But when I was a kid, I went into a toilet, and women, when they use their little cubicles, they don't shut the door. Some of them just sit down on the on the toilet, yeah. right? And you see everything. And, uh... <laughs> no, seriously, that's probably one of the first times I saw like a woman. Yeah. That, right? I mean, Auntie Nora when she was staying over. <laughs> what happened with your Auntie Nora? She was, um, she's into wearing caftans. Into wearing what? You know, caftans. Oh, what, yeah. What caftans? Big, bellowy sort of dresses. Right, so. right. And, uh, yeah. I, I, I used to sit on the floor at home in front of the telly. Sure. She was on the chair behind. Yeah. She did a bit of a sort of a Sharon Stone scene. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Did you see it? There was no underwear? No. <laughs> what what age it? were you? What was it like? What age were you? It was like a ripped tennis ball. So. <laughs> what?! <laughs> what?! <laughs> right, we're off air. We're off air. Either that will put us in for the stomachs. <laughs> that's how I'm living. Ice tea. That's how I'm living. A bit of yeah. school hip hop. Where's our tea? <laughs> Good point, yeah. Uh, go and make me a cup of coffee or something. Well, before you do that, can I just qualify something? I'm a little bit concerned yeah. about your your toilet discussion. W what exactly is your point again? I'm yeah, just a bit bemused. You see, it's, it's a tricky one. All I'm saying is, right, there was at the pub quiz, I go to the toilet, not thinking about anything, I try <laughs> to go, right, there's a little gay fella next to me. <laughs> I love this little gay fella. Now, the weird thing is, there's nothing stopping him having a little, little glance, right? Because he's allowed in, in the fella's toilet. Yeah. Now I'm not allowed to go into the woman's toilet and have a little, have a little look round. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm saying is, should they have another, another toilet area? What, for gay people? Yeah. And, so this would be gay men and lesbians? Uh. Is that going to complicate things? Well, I mean, I can only assume. I mean, to what point? Uh, ask your question, right? If you're intimidated, that's. I mean, that that that's a shame. But you know, most gay men aren't looking at your knob. You know that. What do you mean? I can only say that 99.9% .9 of gay men who use a urinal standing next to what they assume is a heterosexual man aren't looking at his knob. And what are they doing then? They're, they're emptying their bladder. Mm. <laughs> no, but the thing is, you, I you, can't, I can't talk. You're much, saying, Carl. you're saying like, you know, about would you have one toilet for lesbian women and gay fellas, right? What does that mean? Yeah, would it be mixed? Would it just be? Well, would it be have a? Would it have a man and one that's heterosexual man, a little picture of a woman, there, and then what? What would the little icon be? To a man and a woman. A man and a woman. Just having a chat? Yeah. yeah. In pink and dark. But you, you couldn't mix them because then what would happen is you'd get people who, who were going, oh, I'll, I'll play, I'll play up to this a bit. Or yeah. pretend to be gay. And yeah, you know, sort of grow a moustache and shave their head. And pretend to be a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, so, well, I see, so you know people pretending to be gay so they could go in and have a look at the lesbians. Yeah. Right. So that would mean that we need four cubicles now, wouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, no, this is fine. Four cubicles. So, so every pub How now, many toilets do we need <laughs> Every pub's now got four toilets. 
Oh, Carl. Bisexuals. <laughs> yeah. No, interesting. Bisexuals. How many toilets do we need now? <laughs> Call you, the council. Uh, they use any. Huh? No. No, because oh. they're interested in everything, aren't they? Because a little bisexual fellow will be looking at your knob. Right. With them, yeah. what you do, you just have a door, you open it, and there's one urinal there. So you can't get a queue. They have to, they have to sort of wait. I just thought of it. Well, why can't there just be a, a thing between the urinals? So anyone, no one can look at anyone else's knob. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just to go back to Ricky's point. What stops, even if we've got the toilet for gay men, what stops the gay men who want to have a look at your willy going in the regular toilet and pretending that yeah. they're straight? Most men don't, who is wear, police don't this? wear gay across their <laughs> no, head. No, exactly. They don't have a tattoo. There's no branding yet in the British <laughs> house where they have to declare. So we're gonna have to expand this. What, so we've all got to carry, carry identity. Do, do you know cards. you can see a gay, can you? Coming a mile off. Can, no? No, I'll just hold it in next time. No, 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 no. Can you tell gay men? Do you know a gay man? I'd say, uh, probably, if you did like a, if you lined some people up yeah. and said, point them out, I reckon I'd get- But hold on, we're not talking about people dressed in leather with the arse cut out and an handlebar moustache. Yeah. We're talking about, uh, you know, the everyday, no, non scene No, of course, oh, well, well, Yeah, but I mean, uh, suppose I put you in a room and there was ten naked men, right? Yeah. And, uh, could you, there's five gay men and five heteros. Could you walk along that line looking at those gay- uh, Am I naked? No, you don't have to be naked. Why would you have to be naked? To catch them out. Ray <laughs> <laughs> Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now, Carl Pilkington is getting ready. It's the start of a new strand in the show, a new quiz, a new competition to replace Rockbusters. Now, that's quite a tall order. What have you done? Right, like I said, right, if you've only just tuned in, what it is, I've took, and I'll be taking, a well-known saying every week from the show, something that crops up a lot. Uh, first one that sprang to mind was... There's a little gay fella standing next to me in the urinal? That's next week. Okay. This week, there's this airy Chinese kid, right? Yeah. That's crops up quite a lot. Sweeping the nation. Right. So what I've done, I've got five songs. Yeah. And I've edited them together to make that saying. You've got words you've, f from songs where any part of that sentence occurs yeah. to recreate it. Yeah. Now, what do they need to do? Do they need to say what the song is? Just the five songs? I mean, I, I was going to say song and artist, but if you want, just the song. So five, there's five things there, and if someone doesn't get all five, it's still worth emailing in because, because we might give it to the one who's got the most and then... Yeah. Uh, Can I suggest, uh, we go for artist rather than song, only because sometimes it's quite tricky to get a song title, sometimes it's more, it's very odd or it's not quite what you think it is, so maybe artist is a, is an easier one. Do, are you happy with that, Carl? It's your composition. Right? I mean, Steve always does this whenever I come up with an idea. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to make sure it's just the best it can yeah, be, Carl. Yeah. yeah, no, he came up with a few game shows and Steve was going, no, it's no good, and Carl said to me, he said, it's the one that The Office ever got on telly. Yeah, but, well, we shall see how cheap his chimps plays out, but um. frankly, the <laughs> fact that- <laughs> The fact that you said to me, Steve, I've come up with the best game show ever, it's called Cheapest Chimps, what's the idea? I don't know, I just like the name. I, it's something to do with chimps. I thought, well, I'm not sure that's the best, the best game show ever. And well, what was I the other one you came up I with that you told me I think a few people will be disagreeing with him, Carl. I think people will say that Cheapest Chimps could be the best game show ever. You know, when I was at school, people like you, I really didn't like. You're a stirrer, Gervais. He flits, doesn't he, from one side to the next, Carl. The one thing, we may argue, mate, but at least we're consistent. Ricky Gervais flipping from one side to the other. One day he's Carl, on Carl's side. when was the last time Steve wrestled you to the ground and got you in a leg clamp? No, you're right. Never. What, is, is that supposed to be a good thing? Well, did you see us? Yeah, I saw you struggling in the- in Carl's office earlier. He was punching my legs to release me. We were on the floor and I was squeezing him with my mighty legs, wasn't I, Carl? Yeah. It was like, I imagine that's what a crab feels like when an octopus has got it. <laughs> we were playing that, weren't we? So anyway- <laughs> <laughs> So, I'll play you this clip now. It's ten seconds long. We'll play it a couple of times because you'll need to take it in. Mm -hmm. Uh so here it is then. Uh, what are we saying? We saying artists? Let's go with artists. Artists. So email in ricky.gervais at xfn.co.uk. Name the fa five artists it has taken to make up the saying. Give that email address Chinese again. Chinese kid. Give that email address again. Ricky.gervais at xfn.co.uk. There's this very right. Chinese kid. Here we go. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Let's play it again. There we go. <laughs> I think you better play it once more. Uh, I've got them. I've got them. Have I've you got, got them all? Yeah. That's nice work. There we go. There I'll just go. remind you now that the prizes include a uh, Red Dwarf DVD, Marion and Jeff, the first series of that on VHS, uh, a Live Forever Britpop CD, and also the very best of Led, Ze Led Zeppelin. Let's play one of those actually while we're here. Brilliant. Rock and roll. One of the prizes on Coral's competition this week is the very best Led Zeppelin, that's obviously rock and roll. Uh, we've also got uh, a Live Forever Britpop CD, Marion and Jeff and Red Dwarf. And, uh, should we play it again? So people got this hairy Chinese kid. Who yeah. are the artists? Here we go. <laughs> it's tricky, it's not very easy. Once more. Uh, one more. Well, right. there you go. Ricky at xfm.co.uk. Those prizes can be yours. Mm. I, uh, at the quiz, also discovered, of course, and, um, I don't know. I'm just intrigued to know, Carl. I'm, I'm just intrigued to know. Um, it was your girlfriend's birthday, wasn't it? Earlier in the week? Yeah, or last week? On Monday, yeah. And, yeah. um, I mean, obviously it was a triumph with the stuff you got her for Christmas. Um, the condoms. The box, the box of condoms. Box two, set, two. box set of condoms. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not just, <laughs> not just the singles, the whole, <laughs> the whole set. Yeah, a complete collection. Brilliant. So what do you go for this what time? What do you get her? Yeah, but... No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, no, but... no, 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 yeah, but it's her birthday. How long have you been together? About nine years. Okay, so, oh God, it must cost you so much. Every no, but it starts getting tricky, doesn't it? Because I spoiled her a lot <laughs> in the first few years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then you Here's a packet of rubber bands, enjoy yeah. them. Oh. Well, she- it's what she wanted. I, I, I mean, you're making out as if- No, no, everyone wants paper clips. <laughs> Come on, what did you get her? Got her a, a new pair of gloves. Right. Alright, well. And? What, nice- nice leather ones from Selfridges or Howard's or something? Uh, they were good ones, of the sort she likes, so. They weren't- Well, they, they, they weren't the little woollen ones that she had. Yeah. I thought that was a joke when she said he got me these, because I laughed. No, that's- but I know that's- the, the one she did have, the- When they said it's his birthday, right, it was her birthday Monday, and me and Steve wanted to get her, and she went, he got me these, because she had those little woolen gloves on, I laughed, because I thought she was joking, Carl. <laughs> that's what she wanted. Right. I've told you before about buying presents, it's-, it's... Did those gloves have your name sewn in them? <laughs> And a piece of string <laughs> that r ran over the back of your <laughs> duffel coat. You know, I've never been into getting presents and that. I had the problem at that Christmas one, that time with the Victoria Plum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd right. hate that. We'd we've, hate to bring that back. We've done that. Because <laughs> you talked about the book, because it's kind of to do with your dad, isn't it? He's, he's a very bad gift buyer, was that the problem? Well, yeah, my dad's, I mean, my dad just wouldn't bother. It, it was my mum who sort of made an effort and she sort of worked out half of what I wanted, then she left it to me dad to get it off someone, see if he could get one cheap or whatever. Uh, what I, lo I love the fact that usually people talk about, like, drinking heavily yeah. or, um, uh, violent abuse, right? Yeah. But here's what he's been left with and scarred with for, for parents is bad gift buying. Yeah. And that's the Victoria so Plum incident. In the greatest scheme of things in the world, yeah, that's not a bad thing to have, is it? <laughs> right, there was this, there was this, this is what it's like about getting presents and stuff, right? Mm. With me, with my mum and dad. Go on. My mate, Colin, right? He Colin had, uh, No, Colin Bailey. Oh, right? yeah. He had a, uh, little, uh, Sinclair Spectrum, right? Yeah. Computer. Yeah. Which was like the, the, the thing to oh, have at that yeah, time, yeah, right? Yeah. You used to always go round to his house. The it's deal was- Not the one you had to play through the window, cause you weren't allowed no, to- No, no, that's another lad. Oh, right? yeah. This is, this is a different lad. And the deal was, he came to our house, and my mum gave him a pie. <laughs> and then I'd go round to his, and I'd stay there for a few hours playing, you know, Hungry Oris and stuff like that on it. <laughs> yeah. right? Now, my mum and dad knew that I really wanted one of these computers, right? So I waited about a year, came round to Christmas Day, I thought I reckon I uh, might have one. Turned out they bought me the wrong one, they bought me a ZX81 instead <laughs> of a Spectrum, right? And Christmas Day, 
I'm there trying to load the games up. It's not working. I'm thinking, what's wrong? Right? And the thing with me, when I was a kid, I used to get quite sort of agitated. This is the- easy. this is the moment. Right? I found out that it needed a RAM pack to make it work. Right? Looking in the thing and it's saying, and, and make sure you put your RAM pack in the back. And I was like, oh, where's the RAM pack? And my dad's going, I don't know, I've got you the main bit. That's- that's it. So, I was that wound up, I just was sick. Right? <laughs> Just sick. Oh, I didn't feel sick or anything. I just was like, oh god. Went to the sink, just, just sick. Because I was that on edge about it. I said, come on, we've got to get one. And my dad's like, Tandy's shut. We're not gonna, we're not gonna get anything today. Ruined again, Christmas Day. That was after the year when my train set got blown up by our kid. The following year, no ramp pack. And now you ask me why don't I get good presents? He's stunned. He just, just I'm gonna die. Up. Honestly, I'm gonna die. The only thing is just clean sick. Yeah. <laughs> There's no ramp pack. <laughs> <laughs> Why was- did you get to the bottom of it? Why wasn't there a ramp pack? You have to buy them separate. Oh, That's why I'm cons. What do you mean I can't play Frogger? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So, um, there wasn't there another incident when you threw up? Spontaneously threw up? Oh. Through sheer anxiety? I- I do get it. It's- uh, it's not so much now, cos I've- I've relaxed a bit, but as a kid I used to be quite- on edge all the time with certain things. Do you think that's what happened to your the cat? The wind that kept being sick. That it didn't get the food it wanted. And it just threw up. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. God, so they shaved it. <laughs> yeah, but again, you see, the cat thing... I mean, it's mad, I was thinking about it the other day, right? I, I used to think I had quite a normal upbringing. You didn't. Right, and someone was talking your about the Your mother once told you not to go to school because it was windy, Carl. It yeah, was not right? a normal upbringing. The cat was being sick so she shaved it so it was easier to clean. <laughs> right, well my mum and dad went on holiday, right, and I right. stayed at the Rosses down the road. Oh yeah. yeah. Only a kid, must have been about five or something, right? And uh, I was always running around in the house, I had a lot of energy as a kid. What the Rosses did, they had this cat that was dead violent, the most violent Sort of angry cat I have ever <laughs> witnessed. A tiger. It was it, honestly, Steve. If it was bigger, it would have been because it was just always having a go at you. Yeah. If you went to pat it on the head, it went to bite you and stuff. And what they used to do with it to stop me running around, I'd sort of be running around, and then I'd get a bit tired, and they'd say, "Have a lie down on the settee." So I'd, I'd lie down on the settee and I'd nod off. And what they used to do, I'd wake up and they'd I'd put the cat on my belly. <laughs> Right? So I'd be scared to move because it's like it's gonna get me. <laughs> but it would keep you there. It, it kept me there and it used to sort of slaver on me and they'd sort of, you know, go out or whatever and I'd be lying there. That's not normal, is it? Carl, sorry, were you created by the Brothers Grimm <laughs> for one of their fairy tales? What kind of a life is that? <laughs> a cat paperweight to keep yeah, Carl in place. He keeps blowing around. It's windy. <laughs> we'll have to weigh him down. Be careful. Your mum probably told him that it's a windy day. You got to keep something heavy on him. Otherwise, he just gets blown into the road. God bless him, Carl. Let's just hear your uh, your thing once more. Give One people more a final chance. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Can't stop the spirits when they need you. This life is more than just a read through. Ooh, those chili peppers are quite hot. Can't stop xfm one hundred four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. All right. Carl, you know what? You know what the time is. Bong. <laughs> Monkey news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Imagine if Trevor McDonald started like this. Yeah. There's- there's been a lot of stuff going on on that, with monkeys. Oh yeah. I've also- I was mentioning earlier how we sort of making the grocer- the, the, gro the feature grow a bit, uh -huh. right? So, I'm thinking- Oh, I haven't told you Steve either. I've actually been asked to write a thing about monkeys. A poem? A no, what? no, for a magazine called uh, something Apes. Right. They it want me to do. Ape. They want me to do uh, like a column, five hundred words about, about apes, about monkeys. Anything I want on monkeys, anything. What are you going to write? Don't know. If, you know, think about it. Well, Is give it... him a typewriter. I can't with Shakespeare, eventually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could anyway, write about that. Why didn't you write about that? You don't. The fact that you don't believe it. 
You don't believe that an infinite because, number of monkeys because, could type because he watched Shakespeare? Because you reckon most of them hadn't read Shakespeare, so they wouldn't know the, some of the spellings. <laughs> exactly. It wouldn't happen. You idiot. Get on with it. All right. right. The, uh, there's been a few things, but one that springs to mind is, uh, they found a load of monkeys somewhere. <laughs> right? This is brilliant. <laughs> yep. I mean, imagine this if this was news. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Uh, Where? Somewhere. I think it was in, uh... 17th century? Uh, I don't- it doesn't matter that bit. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Find a load of monkeys yeah. that are, uh, having a good chat. <laughs> Go on. They're having a good chat, alright. They've found mean? monkeys that can talk. Yeah. Um, about f they've worked out, they've got about 534 different words that they're using to, like, have a chat about stuff. More than you. <laughs> yeah, what do they chat about then? Just, you know, things that monkeys are worrying about. Just, <laughs> you know, where do you get that from? Uh, <laughs> you know. Who does your hair? <laughs> you going out with her again, are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Have you seen that, uh... Sorry, you can't just leave that. No, 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 I'm just intrigued. I'm just intrigued to know what else. Is there any... No, were I mean, that, that Were they discussing the humanity? Did you see that programme on Channel 5? Yeah. yeah. He can I walk think... up right. Yeah. That was good, but I mean, what, Did you see they, how well he was? You mean they taught them- they taught- they taught themselves this language? Yeah. Where? Where is this? In the wild is this, is it? Um Not sign language, it's but- It's in- in some jungle somewhere. They found these monkeys, he heard some- you know, some explorer was over there, cutting through the- the woods and that. And he heard his name, heard and he thought, that's what he went, what do you want, Riley? Well, it wasn't me, I didn't say. Yeah. I- I didn't say, oh, snide grass, where'd you get that gun? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I- well, it's only me and you here. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> weird, isn't it? No, it's not weird, it's not true. Well, right, come on then, what's well, next? Once again, but what I'm thinking, well, I mean, that did happen. So, well. Um, and to sort of add to that feature. That, that's not true. We're doing, uh, cheapest chimps. Right. Can I just say now to the audience, if you thought that Rockbusters was bad, if you thought that that piece of rubbish earlier about the Chinese hairy kid was, was bad, I, I'm suspecting this is gonna be really not very good at all. I don't- I'm not- I'm just pointing the finger. What I, do you think of it? What do you think of his negativity, Carl? He just keeps- he keeps doing it. I just don't think you should start with the name of the quiz first. This is my- this is my only concern. You- you- you come up with cheapest chimps, <laughs> and now you're trying to construct a game around that. So and I'm not sure it's a proper- well, okay, let's- what is the game? Let's hear it. Right, it's about, uh, a chimp, right? Surprising. Uh, I spoke to an expert about him. Um, Who was the expert? Someone at London Zoo. Okay. Um, how many bananas do you think the little chimp that they've got at London Zoo eats a day? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> How many is bananas is a little chimp at London Zoo? Can they call in for this? No, I, I'd, I'd leave it. I'm just testing it out on Steve because we've already got an email thing going on here. So how many bananas do they eat a day? So one chimp per day, how many bananas? Yeah. How many bananas does a chimp eat a day? And does this mean that- cause sometimes I've seen them on the telly, they peel one, they'll just eat a bit of it and then they'll throw it away. We're talking a whole banana? How many bananas does it eat a day? Um, <laughs> how many angry. bananas do you eat a day? <laughs> getting angry. Come on. Well, I'll- I'll try and have two if I've got time, but I'm okay. pretty busy. Well, I'll go- <laughs> Swing it on your tyre. <laughs> how uh, many- how many do you have? I think, uh, a, a little monkey, a tiny little monkey, per day, um, <laughs> over the course of a day, I reckon he probably eats fifteen bananas. Right. Ricky, what are you going for? Little chimp at uh, London Zoo. But, hold on, the, but- but presumably they don't only feed it bananas. So okay. it's- so it's- so the question is- It's how many bananas does it eat? Come on, Yeah, Rick. but how many does it get given? It would eat fifteen if it was given fifteen, but it might be given a, one slice of banana, fifteen oranges, two hundred potatoes and some lettuce. How many bananas does it eat? Come on. It's Five. Just, have a guess. Five? Yeah. Right. It's only one. Yeah, because it only gets given one. Cheap as chimps. <laughs> what? So what? it's pretty cheap to have a chimp. Right. I, I'm, I'm on your side now, Steve. I don't understand what happened then. Wait, so in the end of it, you always shout "cheap as chimps." <laughs> <laughs> is that what, what? That's the quiz, is it? Oh, play a record. Wait, Carl. so is that it? Is that seriously? Is it? that it? Was that that was that the first instalment of "cheap as chimps"? Yeah. We'll have to see what the press say about this. And and um and why does it only eat one banana? Because it only gets given one banana. I think that's all it wants. No. So you don't even know, you didn't even bother no, to ask it would, him. it wouldn't just get given one banana. And uh, so I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about um, cheapest chimps, that, 
That's safe. That's going to run that's, and run. Yeah, that, I that is going to run and that's run. That's really got legs. Uh, we're, I'm going to check the press Monday. I can only assume it's a triumph. <laughs> exactly. Another Pilkington triumph. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give the prize, if you don't mind, Carl, to Karen and Jeff Gillian, because they're the only one that got, they were the only couple that got, uh, the second answer, which was very, very good. But tricky. they got four, did they? But they only got four right. four is the top answer, so should we give so the answers now? So play it, now? Carl, and then tell us who each one is. All right. So there you go. I didn't know the second one. There's Play the early Chinese kid. So the first one, the last. Last. There she goes. Right. That's George Harrison. No. That's Philip Bainish. And that's Deacon Blue. Right. So it was it was the Lars. Yeah. What's the second one? Strokes. Oof, that was very tricky. That is hard. George Harrison Harrison's for Harry. That's all I could get. It was Harry. Uh, Harry Christie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Uh, Chinese Phil Bailey. Chinese yeah. War is. Yeah. And Deacon Blue, real gone kid. Real gone kid. Yeah. There's this airy Chinese kid. Very yeah. very hard. I love the fact that the normal bit of that, like the normal bit, is like the well-known phrase. There's this hairy <laughs> Chinese yeah, kid. Yeah, exactly. Like nothing happened there. That's normal. There's <laughs> this hairy Chinese kid as a phrase that often. In fact, you're right. We must have said that phrase twenty times today. <laughs> what? When was the last time? That was said twenty times. Never. I don't think it's ever been said anywhere. There's this hairy Chinese kid. I don't- I mean- Even in China? I don't think it's that- well, it's very rare. Definitely not said in China. <laughs> <laughs> the prizes they've won? The prizes they won, Red Dwarf DVD, Live Forever, The Best of Britpop, Marion and Jeff on VHS and The Best of Led Zeppelin, well done to Karen and Jeff Gillian. I've also seen no proof of this hairy Chinese kid. None whatsoever. Excellent. Alpine Stars, Burning Up on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Steve, you're out of the room there. Mm -hmm. Carl took a phone call from someone. Okay. He's found a cellmate. Right. Not a soulmate. I think one day they will be cellmates. Yes. Because he's just like, he loves everything Carl loves and he was telling Carl stuff and Carl's face was lighting up. Yeah. He's told him of two Russian kids in the circus. They're covered in air and their mum tells them off because they're covered in fleas. <laughs> Carl said, See, that annoys me again, doesn't it? They just, they do something else. And the bloke went, yeah, they should just make money out of being hairy. <laughs> and Carl went, exactly. <laughs> and the, and he said, have you heard of the one, the three-legged juggler? And the bloke went, no, what's that? He went, that annoys me as well. Because he thinks they shouldn't have done juggling, they should have done football. <laughs> do you know what I mean, though, Steve? There what do you mean a three-legged juggler? What are you talking about? He's a famous three-legged juggler. Oh, he's mega famous. <laughs> he's like the Beckham of wherever he's from. But the other day I was looking in, I don't know, Bizarre magazine or something, right? And there was this fella who, uh, he had no arms. Uh, so you saw a picture of him, his job was fixing watches, did it with his feet. <laughs> Go on. Well, it's just, why pick the most hardest job to do when you haven't got any hands? Crush, <laughs> crush grapes. <laughs> or... Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that annoys me. Oh, crushed grapes! Imagine him being told that and that he <laughs> comes into the, uh, the careers advisory where I go, now, uh, what do you want to do, Hargreaves? Uh, make watches? Right, take a look at your arms. Crush grapes, mate. <laughs> Sorry, you're a grape crusher. Next. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. I would love you to be a career advisory in some sort of clinic. It would be brilliant. I love the fact that it annoys you. Here's a man, he's got no arms, he has learned to fix watches with his feet. Yeah. An incredible talent, incredible skill, he's utilising that brilliantly. That's annoying to you, you are angered by it. I, I'm only being honest. Now you be honest, right? Your watch is broke, who would you go to? You're in a rush, you need it fixing in a rush. <laughs> now, you need some fresh wine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're amazing. Well, what's this thing that you've been talking about, this video? Freaks. Right. It was a thing that was banned for like 50 years. Uh, I think it's been taken off again, but I don't know why if it's just been deleted. Right? I, I, it's a quest. If anyone out there has got a copy of Freaks on DVD or VHS, can Carl borrow it, please? I just, I, I mean, I almost want to set up a camera to see him watching it. Um, it's absolutely real. They use people in the circus 
of the time. I think it's the twenties or thirties of the Depression. And there's there's people, there's coneheads, there's a bearded lady, all genuine. There's a bloke they call the human slug who's got no arms and no legs, Carl, and he's just there and he rolls a cigarette and lights it with his mouth. I think I've seen his brother <laughs> who isn't called the human slug is called the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> right. How does he make a living? He, um... <laughs> does anyone want to meet Carl for money? Do you know what I mean? Like that? The annoying thing was, right, there was a picture of him, I was gonna put it on I our... I think I've seen his brother! I've, uh, on our website we've, we put things up like this, right? If you go to ricky.gervais at x7.co.uk forward slash... What? You've put things like that on my website? It's nothing to do with me. I want people to know that that website is not kept or looked at by me. So, I don't, what have you put on there? There's a fella on there who's known as the Pillow, <laughs> and he's God. um. You see, I, I get a bit worried with things like this because we're not sort of having a, having a go or anything. It's just things that fascinate, fascinate you. Me. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's a guy. It might it might be the same sort of thing. What's your one? I called? bet you used to stare at people with goiters, didn't you, when you were little in Tesco's? Well. Just go go to xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky. It is. What's the worst thing you've ever seen on like a human face? You know, you know what it is, and what I don't want to talk about it. I can't remember. No. Have you told me? Yeah. What is it? But go it's not go the elephant to, lady. Go to the yeah. Is it the elephant lady? You talked about that, I know. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it again. Go to the website and see the human pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Why is I, he a human pillow? That's what annoyed me. I thought he was more of a draft excluder. <laughs> 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 oh, that breaks all kinds of rules. <laughs> Buzzcocks, harmony in my head. Now, things are flying here at XFM. We, we, people have called in, there is a video of freaks on the way, Carl's gonna see that within the week. That's exciting. That is exciting for me, do you know what I mean? <laughs> about our education of Carl. We started off trying to teach him about science and history and now we just find out he likes pictures of airy Chinese kids and Who women. Doesn't? Who doesn't? No, true. You've got a theory about pictures of freaks, haven't you? Uh, it, you, see, you see, you always bring things up that I don't want to talk about because I'm, I'm really worried that people, if you've just tuned in for the first time, it's the first time you hear it and we're talking about airy Chinese kids, Yeah. talking about the human... Word. Carl, Carl, listen. People don't think that you're taking the piss out of those people. They lump you in with them. They, yeah. Do you know what I mean? They they think that you're a freak of nature, so you can say anything you want. Do you know what I mean? Because it's honest. It's from the heart. It's genuine. So don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, but Suzanne was saying last night that I, I've just I've got a heart of stone or whatever it is. Why? Because because I wasn't crying at comic relief. And all I always say to say to her. Get out, Elephant Man. Let me watch that for thirty minutes. I'll be crying my heart out. Why? Why do you care about that, but not? Because it's that. that. That is more real, isn't it? Right. Think of John Merrick. Sorry, sorry. What the film starring John Hurt is more real than footage of starving people in Africa? No, but what I'm saying is, think about. See, this is why I didn't want to bring it up because people are gonna <laughs> just say. Well, you're allowed to cry at what you like. You can't, people can't have you for not yeah, crying imagine, at someone and crying imagine, at someone else. Imagine that, like, if you've seen the film, you know, his head's all, you know, messed up and that. Yeah. He's getting picked on all the time. Yeah. It's By Michael Elphick, I remember. Yeah. yeah. It's just really, really sad. Whereas, you know, we try to help But yeah, give him a bun people. and he forgets it. Do you know what I mean, though? He never forgets, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Anyway. Oh god. We're giving away stuff again. Yeah. Um, time tell me your theory about p p p freaks who have their picture taken. No, I'd, I'd leave it. Leave no, it. can I tell we'll you? We'll do it next week. Can then. I tell you what this Go is? Go on quickly. What is it? Right. When he sees a little picture, like in his books, he's got. He carries round those oh, yeah, yeah, things, yeah. right? And there's like a, a fella with a little head with some like uh, uh, able-bodied people. He goes, the only reason. He must know the only reason they got to take that picture, right, was so they could show their mates, say, look at me, the little <laughs> fellow with a little head. <laughs> that's what, that's his theory. Yeah. So every picture of a, of a, of a freak, they're right, being- Steve, let me describe the picture to you. 
this, this little fellow with a little head. Right. Playing the, on the piano. <laughs> I've seen it. All his family stood around and mates and that. When have you ever seen a picture of someone playing the piano and everybody wants to be in on it? <laughs> Doesn't happen. Maybe it was one of those kind of Christmas cards they it sent out to everyone. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't. You could see one of them was like in a rush to go away, he was probably uh, planned to go out and he was like, but they were taking a picture, it's oh I'll be in it then before I go out and it was all, it's out of order. Yeah. If you say, if, do you know the one I mean? I do know the one you mean, yeah. You what about the one in the, uh, when you went down to Cornwall, in that little we'll pub? We'll talk about that next week. What, what, do you want to get on, do you? Yeah, right. We've got a giveaway, uh, another prize? Yes, um, you lucky, lucky people. For those of you that haven't seen it, and do not have the requisite £4.99 to buy it <laughs> yourselves, you can win on VHS cassette, panned and scanned. <laughs> Billy Elliot, the special edition, includes bonus oh. documentary, The Billy Elliot Boy. Oh, and, um, I'd like to see how they really sort of got made that film. Exactly. Well, it's the it's the it's the hit film, Billy Elliot, and you can win that on VHS. Um, because Carl, I assume you have included yourself in an excerpt from the movie, taken a scene from the film. Uh -huh. Who do you play, Billy? I'm playing the part of Billy. Brilliant. And uh, we'll have a question at the end of Come it. Come on, yeah. brilliant. Two, three, part of and go. Just been, uh, just been down the valley. I'll tell you, the half where you... What are you looking like that for? What's wrong with Bally? What's wrong with Bally? Yeah, well, what's wrong with it? It keeps you fit and that. What do you think, Aunt Inora? What do you think about me doing Bally? I used to go to Bally. There you go. She used to go to Bally. I used to say I could have been a professional dancer if I'd had the training. Bet you were pretty good, weren't you? Wasn't the time you, uh, wasn't the time you had wind for five minutes, was it? But you've well glided across well, the Well, you just shut up! What's wrong with Bally, anyway? For girls. Not, not, not for lads, Bally. Lads do football, or... Well, I've done that, yeah. Boxing, or... Did that for a couple of weeks, so... Wrestling. Wrestling? Yeah, wrestling, yeah. Oh, rigging. Bally. Well, don't worry about it anyway. Just... Is it all right if my mate Wayne stays over tonight? He just wants to sleep over. He's just coming over to Wayne sleep. Yeah, he just stays over. I'm not gay or anything. He's just I don't fancy him. I'm not. Yes, you do. I don't. Yes, you bloody well do. What, just, just because I want my mate Wayne to sleep over and I've started doing ballet, that, that turns me into a gay man, does it? You haven't seen my Village People album lying around. You're asking for a hiding. Just joking, just having a, just having a laugh. Just didn't mean... <sighs> Fuck nothing here, I'm going out. No, from now on you stay here, you look after your nana. Got it? Well, there is. What's the question? Powerful. Uh, I'd like to know what was the name of the actor that Carl was taking the role of. Does that make sense? That's not yeah. grammatically quite right, but anyway, well, yeah. Fine. Who was the uh, Who was the young lad that uh, Carl was taking the place of there? Uh, name the actor, not the character. And just email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. You can win yourself. You can be fast. You can win yourself a VHS edition of Billy Elliot worth £4.99. I'm going to leave the uh, sticker on, which has actually got the price on. Brilliant. I'm going to leave that on so you know just what you've got in your head. Foo Fighters. No, it's not. This is. Feeder. Feeder. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing now. Why have we got to stop? Sorry, we just had an argument then. Why have we got to stop at 5 2? It's just, uh, the, f the football's on, isn't it? So. So yeah. we, wh what can we do? We can do a link here and then we can play we can we'll talk play here, we'll play a song, do a little. What about chat. the competition? We've got to announce the competition. Well, Steve. Well, I know. can tell you right now that, um, there's only two people, it would appear, that are interested in a VHS copy of Billy Elliot. Um, that's how mediocre that gift and that prize is, Carl. I don't know if you want to learn from that. Yeah. But I'm going to give this one to, uh, MJ McKay, who has correctly identified that you were taking the part of Jamie Bell that's in it. Billy Elliot. So, uh, well done. Right, just forward me that and I'll, uh, sort that out. We'll get the video. What film are you doing next week? Dunno, I've got, uh, 
been out and bought a couple, got, uh, got Silence of the Lambs I can do something with. Right. Uh, bought Fight Club, but it's a bit difficult. Uh, you know, always, always open to suggestions and that, so, you got any favourite films? What about the 1930s film Freaks? Oh. oh. I can't wait, I cannot wait for That'd your- be brilliant, that'd be good. Excited about that. Why don't you do a film review of that next week as well? Yeah, well it depends if the fella, you know, if, if anyone's got it, just send it in, I'll send it you back once I've watched it. So that'd be good. Uh, next week we'll do, uh- Oh please, please, please tell me there's gonna be more Cheapest Chimps. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. We'll see what the press say. We'll see what the press say about that. Looking we'll forward to that. Out. Do you know how like, you're always having a go at my ideas? Yeah. Little, yeah. you know, cheapest chimps you've put down. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, I, I normally come up with these because you don't come up with a competition sure, idea. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. He's done yeah. him again. Yeah. Well, cheapest chimps, mine, you're dissing it. Yep. Rockbuster's one of the most successful competitions ever. Uh-huh. Uh, and he means in the world, not just yeah. on XFM. Yeah. You put that down. Yep. Right? Uh, what are you thinking about this, right? I was watching Comic Relief okay. last night. Came up with an idea, mm -hmm. right? You get Jono. Okay, Jono right? Coleman, yeah. Uh, say Vanessa Feltz. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe you know Dawn French because because she'd be around for that. And then get them all in a room for comic relief. And what you do, put a cake in front of them. Yeah. Right. And and like you you don't feed them. And like, they're going, oh, I'd love a bit of that cake, <laughs> right? It's called Famine Academy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Whilst they lose pounds, they get pounds. <laughs> right. What do you think? Play a record, Carl. Well. I love it, Again, Carl. again. I love it, Carl. Yeah, again. I love it.